Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great to have everybody back for another week of great talk here on our show. And uh, tonight, George and I are thrilled to welcome Valentina Latina. How are you doing this night today? <laughs> I'm doing good. Thank you so much for this amazing, you know, moment to share with all my American audience, of course, and Latinos who are watching us today. Thank oh, you, George great. and Ben. Yeah, well, as, as Groucho Marx once said, it's early yet. Uh, anyway, so we've, if you've got a question for, uh, for Valentina, uh, about all the stuff that we're going to talk about, feel free to throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is sitting in there somewhere and typing on your, your questions and relaying to us. And we'll get to those in just a little while. And, uh, so why don't we get the show on the road? You ready, Mr. T Mr. Whittem? I'm ready to go. All right. It's time for voiceover body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to voiceover body shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, JMC Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B -S. B S. Yes. Well, it's great to have everybody back here uh, after a couple of weeks. You know, it's like we try to do the show, you know, we do it every other week. And then the opposite Monday when we throw tech talk out there, it's like there's nothing to do tonight. I guess I'll watch TV. Uh, there's more TV to watch lately. <laughs> there sure is. You know, <laughs> you know, and the yeah. And of course, uh, now, if you're watching this in replay, we have no idea what's going on in Europe right now. I mean, we know today on Monday, but we don't know what's happening out there. Uh, of course, you know, our our thoughts go out to all our Ukrainian friends uh, who are under siege right now. And uh, I'm wearing this army T-shirt in salute to yeah, the military yeah. who are green, green and here the, too. And the civilians. Yes. Who oh, are yeah. standing up for their country, which is pretty amazing Yeah, and nail biting to watch. Yeah. I mean, my family is from that part of the world. My father's family is from around Kiev. So I, I, I have a, a bit of an attachment to it. Not that I've ever been there. Anyway, speaking of going on around the world, uh, we have a great guest tonight. Uh, she's going to be uh, joining us from Santa Clarita, which is, you know, it's Los Angeles. It's all the same place. Uh, but uh, uh, Valentina Latina is a Colombian-American award-winning actor, voiceover, uh, actress, uh, based in Los Angeles, two times of OS award winner is best voiceover in the U S well, talk about big time, uh, best actress short for defenseless in 2020 in five, in five film festivals. And for years, she's been the official voice of big celebrities such as Ava Longoria, Brooke Shields, Giada De Laurentiis. Tiffany Haddish uh, for the Latin market. I was going to say, you don't just talk for them. I mean, they have their own voices. But, uh, uh, anyway, let's welcome to the show, because we've been looking forward to this for a while, Valentina Latina. How you doing tonight? I'm doing just great. I'm very honored to be here with you guys. 
And yes, so happy sharing this moment with you and all around the world listening to us and watching us today. Yeah, well, we were glad to have you with us tonight. Now, you're 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 a voice actor. You're an actor actor. You've you've done a lot of screen work, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit. But you are like many Americans, <laughs> not from America. But the, see, what I tell people, what I think about Americans is whether you were born in you know in Sicily or you were born in in Botswana. If you come to this country, that makes you an American because you're taking a risk and Americans are risk takers. And that's what makes <laughs> Americans. So you came from Colombia. Tell us about your, your life in Colombia before you came here. Well, actually it was um, very helpful having my dad as a journalist and a newspaper. And also my mom, she's still um, a soap opera actor. And that helped a lot in my career, you know, having this inspiration around. So she was very aware of my education, you know, about classes, painting, dancing, and ballet and acting and et cetera. But at some point, my, my, my childhood was kind of frustrated. I'm going to use this moment to express okay. myself. <laughs> okay, go for it. Because it was very pushing, you know, it was a, kind of like, like a ma manager, we say that. Uh, the kind of mom was like, come on, stand up and do this, do that. Um, some point, you know, uh, as a child was like, okay, wait, I, I want to I wanna play with my friends. <laughs> I want to go to school like a regular kid. Uh, but after 30 years, something, um, being involved in the entertainment industry, I just have to say thank you, mom. Thank you for, because maybe she saw something some kind of talent and 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 definitely i'm um, just thankful for that type of education and that's how exactly i started in voiceover um i remember i was in this studio she was record shooting this uh, telenovela which is a soap opera mm -hmm. and and she, so she finished i was eight years old and i clearly remember we were walking down the hall looking for the parking and um this guy was like like looking around like for something and my mom was like hey are you okay and he's like hey rocio can i borrow your daughter for a second and she's like yeah sure okay <laughs> <laughs> so um that's how i really started it was just the right thing the right moment the right people because i i i remember entering this um you know, professional sound studio it was my very first time in front of a microphone. And I remember the guy on the other side of the glass giving me directions and telling me, can you do say this line? But um, can you laugh? Can you say it hotter, louder? Or and I was like, what am I doing? This is cool. I remember I was having a lot of fun. And after that, I became the voice of doing the promos for the only show we have for kids back in the 90s. So I did that for years. Of course, as a child, you don't know that's a job. <laughs> but yeah. uh, they're not paying you directly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and that's it. That's how it really happened. Yeah. Do you remember going from feeling like it was sort of like structured play to you're actually doing a job. Do you remember how old you were like when that happened? When you knew you were yeah. like, really making money? Talking about uh, the, the crossover. And because after that, it was promos, uh, radio commercials and dubbing. And, you know, for Latin America, the dubbing industry is a huge part of our voiceover industry. Sure. Um, and so when I came to Los Angeles, I, I used to be the, the, um, the voice for Food Network Latin America. So I was running five shows and the studio was like, hey, Val, can you just buy a microphone? Can you, can you go to a studio? Can you, you, they want you to keep recording. I was like, dude, no. Do you know how much <laughs> it costs a microphone here or having a decent acoustic, whatever? Like, um, so I was like, wait, so if that's important, it's because this is an actual job. <laughs> and so far, for the last 
15 years. It's been a hobby or something. I, I, you know, I have some income, but really I was just a student, you know, a theater student. So for me, it was more like, okay, I have money for, you know, as a theater student, I have money for this wardrobe or wig or whatever I needed. And as opposed to just food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as opposed to just food. Exactly. Which is, which is always. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that was my shock, really. And I'm, yeah. and I'm sure um, uh, for, for the people who's starring in Latin America, this career nowadays is different. Because I'm talking about only 12 years ago, but believe it or not, 12 years ago, it wasn't this big in Latin America. The respect our industry has, it's been growing through the last 10 years. And yeah, I'm... I'm I'm sure I'm not. I'm not wrong on that. Yeah. So you you came here in in, in 2010. And what what prompted you to uh, to come this way? Um, my heart was absolutely broken by this chitty guy. <laughs> so I was trying oh. to escape. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. And and I was like, oh man, I need to get out of my country. I don't want to see this guy anymore. But wait, this offer of uh, you know doing film and New York Film Academy and, you know, doing more about on camera and everything. So that was another excuse, of course, improving my English as well. And Los Angeles was the, the first city came to my to my budget and it was fine for me. And I was like, OK, let's do it for a year. And it's been 12. <laughs> <laughs> and you're what still happened? here. <laughs> <laughs> So how how did you you know so you you come to you come to another country to a new city to a totally different you know culture for the most part how did you make that adjustment? It's, I'm still doing it. I'm still oh, okay. <laughs> working on it. And to be honest, it's um, it's a big step, especially as I say, because voiceovers, first of all, in Latin America, they're very anonymous. Can I say that? Like. Uh, you don't really ask yourself, oh, who's that voice? Or, yeah, the, 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 the career for voiceovers could be just completely, I don't know, like people doesn't really know. And you can be in the industry easily the, your entire life. And, and these type of, of things like sharing information with your colleagues or, or putting videos because course technology is being working on it and helping a lot but over there is not that common it's not a very common thing to do you just go to the studio and you just go home and nobody knows what do you do for a living and and yeah so seeing the voiceover industry here you guys are allowing much more having that presence with your name with your brand with your you know your pictures or you put you know your website and da, da 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 and that's a big thing that's a big difference we we have hmm yeah I, I, that's it's fascinating that you know that nobody really chris we, we like to say that there are no a-lister voice actors there are a-lister actors who do voice work uh but you know the rest of us are you know doing all the other things that are that are out there what types of material are you are you doing? Is it strictly commercial? Or are you doing narrations? Are you still doing dubbing? Or what are all I, the different things that you're doing? Yeah, I, I I always said that dubbing it's my really my 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 big school in voiceover, and but after that through the years, that's a good thing also like to be alert, to be aware what is going on with your voice and what is going on with the type of auditions you really feel you're doing something and you're actually booking. And it's been mostly animation and video games. And so when I, when I, when I put that on the table and I say, okay, I'm booking this, 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 and this, and now I want to, or this project calls my attention. But guess what? That's very close to my, education as a theater actor so i think that's a great compliment but i never planned this the the good thing is that um you can use whatever tools you have from your background or or something you actually liked and and complement each other so i am really looking forward 
being more present in the video game and animation industry. Yeah. Uh, once again, if you're just joining us, where have you been? Uh, but other than that, our guest tonight is Valentina Latina, and she is a uh, uh, Latin American uh, voice actress, but you also do a lot of English stuff, right? And, and we'll get into that in a second. But if you've got a question for her, based on what we're talking about, throw it in the chat room, whether you're on Facebook or if you're watching on YouTube Live, there's a chat room in there. You can throw your questions in there, and we'd love to hear from you. And we know you're out there because we see the numbers going up and up and up. Watching the show. Anyway, uh, so um, we were talking about, uh, about dubbing, and uh, how did the pandemic affect you? I mean, I know... I suddenly everything had to get dubbed. I know all the networks were, you know, desperate for material uh, in, in various languages. You know, I've, I've been dubbing you know, a lot of stuff from Arabic, you know, from Lebanon and India and Egypt and, and stuff like that. Uh, did the pandemic have a, an impact on, on the type of stuff you were doing? Actually, in a very good way. Good. And I'm glad because there is something voiceover in America, they were ready for it. And, and I'm so happy really having the kind of support like you guys do and many other, you know, sources you can have uh, if you're part of the union or you regular taking classes, etc. And my surprise was like, oh my God, finally I can use Source Connect more than once a month. <laughs> <laughs> Almost pays for itself then, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But really, I, I had Source Connect. I really was using it like once every three months, four months, because most of, most of my work was like, you know, going, driving to the studio, etc. And and the pandemic was like, OK, that's great. I, I already have this. And now it's time maybe to invest. Oh, maybe you know, I need another camera or uh, another, you know, extra monitor or, or Whatever. So that that's a good thing. Unfortunately, talking about Latin America, it's the opposite. You know, regular voiceovers that it's not that common. People has their home studios or with a professional acoustic or professional gear. And and that's that's pretty sad because it was like, man, I've been in the industry for the last 40 years and the studios close and they're only hiring people with this kind of microphone or whatever. And, and so, yes, that's the big difference. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, now I remember the question I had originally asked there, and that is what type of work are you doing? You're yeah, obviously you're doing dubbing work What other types of stuff. Yeah. Dubbing and video games and animation and animation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, George, what of that is the most technically George. challenging demanding for you uh, of those three? And, uh, you know, you're talking about, like, technical? Yeah. yeah like, as an actor, what do you have to the most tech to deal with when you're doing jobs? Is it animation? Is it games? What, what, where is the one that you're like, this is, ah, this is going to be a big pain? <laughs> yeah, big pain is always going to be in video games. Uh, as you know, not only your preparation, because your, your instrument will be Exposed yeah. the whole time, and yeah. it's very easy if you don't have the proper training to just make some damage to your courts and um, and also like things to use your gain. How are you gonna use your gain when you're screaming and when you're not, or you have to whisper this whole time and you don't know that, and or or you just forget to do it to change your gain. <laughs> <laughs> do they expect you to mess play. with your gain a lot? Do they? Do they? When you're doing yes. the games, do they expect you to play with your gain? It depends. A lot? Really, I have a, this studio in Spain. They are in Spain, and when they send me over, they they put like these huge marks. Like, please be aware. Like, this is whispering, Brr. and you know you have to do the same lines three times. So whispering the whole time, then screaming, projecting same lines da 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 da, da. um wow. so yeah that's the that, that I, I would say video games it's it's more exhausting also you know yeah yeah video games is you know the tremendous range of stuff because you're you know you could be like chopping somebody's head off and really you know uh getting into the the emotion of that but uh you know but and how do you adjust for that so um 
you know. Are those there sessions are... typically directed yeah. sessions? You guys have both done some of that. Not really. No, no, no. Because if I do it, um, well, the thing is I haven't done in English video games, but in mm. Spanish. All my credits are in Spanish. And you really never see the, the character most of the time. Which is like, okay, I'm going to imagine this lady is like, what? <laughs> uh, you take choices. Uh, <laughs> that's the best way. Like, okay, I'm going to imagine she is a huge lady. And, or, um, and so you take choices and they just give, the, give, give you the lines. And so I'm responsible to really work on the acting according to the description of what is more about the character, right? Right. And yeah, that's a big responsibility. You now that I think about it, wow. <laughs> it's acting. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's acting, and that's the thing. If you don't really know how to control your emotions, and and the character is great or you know crying the first scene, and after that you're really in tears. Like, okay, now you have to save those tears <laughs> because you have to do it ten thousand more times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did one a couple of weeks ago where I was eaten by birds. Imagine what that was like. <laughs> what the heck? It's what kind of acting. How do you, how do you, how Wait, do you, what kind of bird? Imagine that. I, it was just, a, it was a very Pigeons. mystical thing from, yeah, yeah, they were digital <laughs> birds. So it didn't really hurt. Uh, but definitely when the sessions are directed, it helps and everything is much more, you know, okay, smoother absolutely. and everything. And you have like, yeah, of course. What, what, I, I, ahead, we know from doing some tech support from you, for you, that you use Pro Tools. And you know, we have this feeling about Pro Tools, that it's too complicated, voice actors don't need it. So how did you end up landing on using Pro Tools for your studio? Yeah, right. I don't know why I still have it. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> Just kidding. And, um, well, I'm still learning. I, I really um, encourage my students as well to learn and don't give up because apparently it's so hard. It's, it's just apparently. But once you really know how to use it, as, at least the basic stuff or for whatever you need it, you're part of the professional you know, industry. It's so good when I have clients all you know, on the other side of the world and you can send easily, and you are speaking the same language. And I think that's the main thing. Um, and we have to be, uh, you know, according what is happening. So I'm not going to say like, yes, I, sure, I send you that garage band, okay, whatever. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So Pro Tools, um, um, although I'm still learning, George the Tech has been illuminating my studio and a lot of troubles and issues I, I, I had at the moment with certain clients. And George just always have the right answer right there. Well, if it's not me, and it usually isn't me, it's usually one of the other guys <laughs> on my team answering those 911 calls when they come up. But uh, yeah, <laughs> And when you say 911, I have to say it's literally 911. Like you can call one in the morning, 2 p.m., and 2 a.m., and and they really are there to help you. So thank which you. Guys. Some somebody's willing to answer the phone <laughs> it's most two of the time. o'clock in the morning, which yeah. blows my mind. Yes, I think Dan, <laughs> you may have done that once. <laughs> yeah, I did work with somebody. They were in Spain, and I had to work with them at midnight. And my wife's like, "What are you doing at midnight?" Yeah. Um, <laughs> once again, we're talking with Valentina Latanya, and uh, if uh, if you got a question. Throw it in the chat room because we want to hear from you guys. We like that's why we do this show so you can ask the questions. But of course, I like to ask the questions too. Um, so you're you you're you have a career, but you're you're bilingual, obviously, since you're speaking to us. Do you do any English work, or is it, is it strictly uh, strictly in Spanish? Oh yes, dubbing. It's it's is my surprise. Actually, my first dubbing in English was a Latin America show called El Chapo for Netflix. Mm -hmm. And another, you know, thing that that's very, I, I call it magic thing because mics, that's what they do. They do magic. Um, the casting director called me and she's like, you're going to play 
El Chapo's mom for the Dobby. And I'm like, okay, dude, I'm not even close to be 70 something. And the lady is, no, you have the boys for that. Yes, but I don't really speak English. Like I don't have the, you know, the confidence to do dubbing in English. Really? Four seasons. Yes, you do. And we need you. And then I understood not only because you know, the historic side is that America's, you guys don't really need to dub much of Latin America projects into English. Uh, let's say it, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but because they wanted to keep the American audience with the flavor, what is this from? In this case, it's a Mexican story and, and the accent will help with the character. So I... I played El Chapo's mom four seasons and you can watch it on Netflix. And, and I had just a blast. I learned so much. There's a huge difference too in, in the dubbing. And then that, you know, this, that you guys use more like a karaoke, I call it like a oh, karaoke thing. Makes right? it a lot easier. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah, um, I'm old school. So three I was, beeps and go. No, that, that doesn't exist in Latin America, my friend. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm old school, so I only have, you know, I used to always have my, still have, uh, or scripts. And we just full, fill the, the, the script with, then she cries here, then she laughs here, then she screams here, blah, 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 and then we have our paper the whole time here. And the director or engineer is like, okay, late. So you always have to start own time and and i also learned of course that i'm not a scientist science person but the light is faster than the sound right yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i if i am listening only listening or guiding myself because the dialogue already started i'm already late I have to always keep so you have to anticipate you have to exactly and look jump into ahead the just the, just the right amount Exactly. So I have that eye and that ear, but just because it really was my school in dubbing. And when I came here doing the chapel, that was actually like seven, eight years ago. Um, I was like, why do I need three bits for? <laughs> I know when the lady will start talking. <laughs> right. It probably seemed kind of silly to have to hear beep, beep, beep. And you're like, what? Okay. <laughs> But then and after so many projects, I'm already, you know, I, I got used to. So it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's good. Once again, we're talking with Valentina Latina, and we are talking about all sorts of stuff. A lot of it dealing with the Latin American market, which, of course, is huge, you know, not only in Latin America, here in California and across the United States. It's It's been a growing industry, and I, I take it you've seen tremendous growth uh, yourself, as, you know, since you since you arrived here. You know, in the Latin yeah. American market. Like what? Sorry. In, in the Latin American market, you've seen a tremendous growth here in the last yes, uh, 10 I'm years. So this, those are the kind of things I am thankful and, and very happy with the streaming and all the platforms are currently around the world. Not only Netflix, but Amazon or HBO, um, uh, Hulu. And they are really looking for new representation and new shows so i really enjoy seeing indie projects from philippines or from not only from colombia but peru and uh, bolivia you know dominican republic so many countries that for sure they always had talented people there and working on their projects or um, documentaries, etc. But now because the streaming, they're hungry for more content. They're given the opportunity to those. And, and, and that's amazing. That's great. You know, how the industry is exactly as you say, Dan, uh, growing. And for Latin America, there's also a big door to new stories. Like, for instance, you you have this cliche idea oh colombians only drugs and narco dealers or uh, ladies like this and that and guess what there are so many other stories we can tell and there is so many other things that happen 
in Latin America. And I think that's a big thing also. Yeah. Well, it's a big place. Uh, <laughs> South America is a big place. Central America is a big place. And you're absolutely right. It's fascinating to, I, I think this is probably one of the best things about all this is that we're getting to see cinema and television from other countries, you know, dubbed into English or, you know, stuff that is from all over the world and seeing the talented filmmakers and, and directors and producers that are everywhere. I mean, you know, stuff coming out of Europe, stuff coming out of South America, uh, coming out of the Middle East, you know, because I worked on a lot of that stuff. And it's, it's quality stuff. So they've clearly been studying what goes on in Hollywood Right, and right, they had, and they've been applying it to their own stuff, and uh, I think that's great. And Turkey, course, right? Turkey. Oh, oh my God! Been watching a few Turkish. Uh, I guess you problem. couldn't call them telenovelas because yeah. they're from Turkey, but they certainly seem to take on that flavor. Uh, you know, it's it seems like the same characters, the same emotion, only it's it's not Colombia or Mexico or something. Like that, <laughs> kind of fascinating. Uh, we're going to take a, a break right now. And uh, if again, if you have a question for Valentina, throw it in the chat room and we will be happy to uh, to make sure that she gets to answer that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Valentina Latina here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Don't go away. <laughs> this is Bill Ratner and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Spring is coming, and despite what Major League Baseball decides to do, it's high time you got your authentic VO baseball cap. Top quality fabric and embroidery with an infinitely adjustable strap tells the world just what it is that you do do. VoiceOver Essentials VO Gear Baseball Caps are 100% cotton chino twill, garment washed unstructured caps manufactured by Stylemaster, and feature sewn eyelets, pre curved visor, and a metal adjustable tri glide buckle on the adjustable strap. Available in black with their exclusive VO Voice Bubble design embroidered in red and white on the front and a bright red as heard on TV logo on the backside. Show the world, or at least the people in your town, what your profession is. They're always a great conversation starter. VoiceOver Essentials VO Baseball Caps. Get yours exclusively at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in, in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in voiceover or to change something about your voiceover career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in Voiceover. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. 
Hey, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Our guest is Valentina Latina, and we're talking about the Latin American market and whatever else goes along with that. And uh, if you've got a question for her, and I, I know she's very accomplished and has spoken to a lot of other people, uh, uh, give us, you know, just get in the chat room and uh, Jeff Holman will get that question to us. And we've got a bunch that we're going to get to here in just a little bit. Um, do you do a lot of your own marketing? I mean, or do you have an agent or are you managed? How is it that you get your work? Um, well, we definitely, as a Latinos, trying to understand what the agent does for me. Why do I need an agent? <laughs> we don't have that in Latin America. <laughs> that doesn't exist. Only exists for actors, for in-camera actors, and they're called more like managers. And, um, and that's what they do. They, 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 they find jobs for you and auditions. But um, again, when I came here, I was like, for what? I just <laughs> go to the studio and I say, hey, I've been dubbing for so long or I'm the voice for this brand, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't that easy. So I understood I definitely had to to have a in, in, in agent and also to understand how it works, not only for the California marketing, but to know that you also can have another agent in different states. And, and so that's how I, I work. Although the last two years, I feel this being changing and, and I, I've been more one-on-one -on -one with certain clients that it goes like they find me straight because my website or even social media, which I was like, okay, what I'm gonna post about it. I'm a camera actor, so yeah, definitely is good to to have you know certain pictures like as a reference for casting directors. But really, casting directors and voiceover, they really need to see myself in a picture. And 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 I think the tools, social media such as you know TikTok or Instagram, if you, if you use it properly. Because this is not only to have fun and then make funny things. Um, you can actually work on a very, very big community is constantly looking for new talents or people who's trending. And that's a big surprise. And, and, I, and it's been hard for me, really. I'm not a big fan of posting every second, but, uh, but I try. And through the years, of course, I, I, I have now another person who's helping me and and yeah that's that's a big big change in the marketing so yeah. Yeah. where do, where do you generally post stuff what's what's your you know your platform of of uh you know, your favorite platform for doing that uh for for old people <laughs> yeah. well let's not, let's not take it too far here for hey there's nothing wrong to say old people it's my favorite people, by the way. We, we just refer to ourselves <laughs> as seasoned citizens. So, seasoned okay. citizens. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I like that. Flavored, flavored, seasoned people <laughs> is Facebook, right? Because there is a lot of groups, and I'm so happy also it's, it's, it's part of our community to see each other and being in touch with many of them around the world. And but Instagram is actually the, the platform I, I use mostly. And, and it really helps. And it's surprising. Like this studio in Australia the other day was like, hey, Val, I've seen you, you, you using Source Connect. Can we have a session on this and that? And I was like, okay. Um, that's interesting. Mm, that, and that's great when they call you without, without you even knowing they're out there. You know, right. Like I heard you can do this, and that's that's always fabulous. Interesting to hear that they're they're finding you on social, and then seeing that they you are equipped to do these jobs, and they're like, "Let's reach out to her. She's right. She's a voice we like. She's got a studio. She's obviously serious. And other other markets and countries are gonna, probably going to do that a lot more. That's right. That's right. And and also when I share time, like personal time, or I'm helping. Um, a casting director and seeing them going through social media, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like the first time was like, no, you have to look for professional people. So you go to agents, you go to their website. No, 
I need them now. And I like this. So hashtag bilingual actor. Brand. And there is only a hundred dudes po posting with that hashtag. Let's just give an example. That helps. Okay. So I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe I should start doing that. That's my tip. The tip of the day. Creative. Very <laughs> yes. creative. All right, we got a couple of questions from our vast worldwide audience that is jamming into our site oh, here. Yeah. And uh, George, why don't you take uh, the one from Terry Briscoe there? Sure. Uh, Terry asks, Valentina, what would you say is the biggest difference between acting in front of the camera and voice acting behind the mic? And do you have a preference for one over the other? Wow, that's a great question. Hi, Terry. I don't think there is any difference. Because if you are only a voiceover who thinks, or a starring voiceover who thinks your body is not part of it, you're <laughs> completely wrong, my friend. Because uh, guess what? Your, your body is it's going to be directly connected to your brain and for so many things with your emotions. So if I'm angry, if I'm, I'm maybe not have the conscious the entire time but definitely your hands are gonna move definitely your body is gonna you know uh, stand in a different way when you are part of the army or when you are injured or when you are the mom and you're trying to give an advice to your son and and that's the the, the other part i always invite or encourage my students like Take some theater classes. It's the best lab you can have in your life, even though you're never going to be in front of a camera. But to have the conscience where your hands are <laughs> and how you put your feet, uh, right, it totally helped. It, it, it really helped. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Well, the big difference, of course, is about technical things. You have to know a different world, different vocabulary. And, uh, yeah, we say the things in a different way and you of course don't um uh, don't have to be aware how do you dress up that's a good thing <laughs> mm -hmm. um and yeah that and basis of part? that basis of acting on camera is so so valuable i think to the voice actors there's so many voice actors who are successful because i think because they've had that that training of on camera acting or theater acting Exactly. It, I, yeah. I, I hear it. I, I work with thousands of voice voice actors and I'm not a coach and I'm not an actor, but I know an actor when I hear one and when the, it's just something about it. It's just you they, they impart that character and right. having that training is is huge, huge. You're you're totally right on the money there. Yeah. A yeah, lot of it, yeah. A lot of it has to do with the fact that if you understand a camera and that you're not playing to a camera unless of course you're doing a commercial where you're like talking straight to a camera you're Perfect. playing to somebody else you're you're playing a scene you don't play to the mic to the camera you play to the other person in the scene i think a good actor is going to realize that the microphone is the exact same thing that you you don't pay attention to the microphone you're just playing paying attention to what's in black and white in front of you with a, a few pen marks and stuff um yeah. and and that helps a lot have, have you found that yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a different translation. I would say you can translate in, you know, in front of a camera, same emotion because let's say the the character fall in love, and but even though you don't have the other character, and in front of you now you have to use more your imagination, but um. To have the training definitely makes a big, big difference. And and what I'm saying is the people who's coming from radio, people who's been only behind the microphone, it's usually very afraid to be on, you know, on stage or in front of a camera. And that's obvious. <laughs> it's <laughs> it, it is it is scary. Uh, but don't be scared. The theater is your friend. And the best lab, the, the, really, I really recommend to everyone, any kind of profession, really, and human being, it really helps uh, doing some theater once 
in life. And I don't know what which one would be my favorite. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Well, sometimes voiceover because I don't need to put makeup or or shower <laughs> sometimes. Oops. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. It's, it's <laughs> just between us. <laughs> George is like, wait, what? I showered today and my hair is on point. This is as good as it gets right here until I, my buddy Arch comes over and cuts my hair again. Uh, how about Tag? Go for it. Let's see here. Uh, Valentina, uh, this is from Tag Studio, loved your amazing, engaging presentation at One Voice Dallas. Happy to see you again this evening. I'd love to know more about how you like your your studio chair. Have you had it long? <laughs> and do you recommend it? Your studio chair is color coordinated. <laughs> it's, yeah, really, you fit right in. It's there. it's a fashion statement. It's everything. Wait, all about. Yeah. Sp sponsored by oh, this guy. G two. Okay. It's got a uh, headrest. It's got it's, a pillow. Yeah, and I have this is amazing. Guy. I have another pillow here, oh, and wow. I know all of us we need it, huh? Is that the a lumbar? Yes. At the bot, the back. Yeah. The guy really helps my my back. I don't know. I found it uh, very, very uh, comfortable, and and I know it's a gamer chair. I I'm not a gamer, but is it's it, you can stay here, like <laughs> trade it out or something, just fine. Were you were you in a place? Were you in a store that happened to sell them? How did you happen to know? I had it. You must have sat in one at some point and thought I liked it. Yeah, I tried once for a gamer friend, and I was like, "Dude, this is amazing!" And he's like, "Yes, because I play professionally, and it's easily ten hours a day, and you have to be as comfortable as you can." And I was like, "Okay, let's try that." So yeah, for some reason, this is uh, a big tool also because my back was killing me, and mm. And, you know, we always talk about microphones and everything, you know, but let's talk about chairs. We need to take care of our specs. No right? question. Yeah. I've got so a new a one myself chair. now. Gamer wow. chair, uh, the, the, that makes a big difference. Of course, yeah. this is my, that you know, what, what I do, my editing and everything inside my, my booth. I, I rather not sit in. It's more of like a personal thing and i like to be stand up the whole time be yeah. more be more physical yeah more yeah more more physical physically. well however if i'm doing an audiobook of course i i, I take my breaks and i see this is more chair yeah have you been doing many audiobook titles is yes. that something just to fill the time or uh... yes a lot of audiobooks mostly for kids and and i like it because i i'm a mom as well so it's good to have that language and and to test myself if my daughter is paying attention and is not getting bored by my voice <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point if you can entertain and keep your own kid attention then you're doing something right because <laughs> right? bored of you pretty quick no question <laughs> george why don't you get the next one from uh from jay horace jay there. horace yeah uh uh, he says, Ventina, you have a very genuine, bright energy. Um, oh, what kind you, of Jay. chair are you sitting in? Well, I think we, we know we, now. We covered that but one, he yeah. says, it looks like a Recaro uh, seat that I had in an older BMW back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Those chairs are definitely modeled after the Recaro racing seats from cars, for sure. Um, and and you, bid, you did kind of answer this already, but tell us more about your, your setup. So he asks... Um, do you work in a booth or in a closet? And then which are your primary microphones that you use? Yeah, I do have the um, well, microphones. I have the the shotgun Sennheiser, the 416. 416. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And the TLM-103 is my best friend forever. We, I'm, I'm very thankful about, the, um, especially with my narrations and dubbing, it really, I I hear is a difference and and whenever I'm doing more commercials I use the other one but it all depends it really sometimes um, the client prefers one than the other one and um, that was a question I forgot I'm sorry yeah oh no just that you're, you're what, using, what a, you're using a booth and then yeah. what kind of microphones oh yeah have? so I have a booth 
as many of my colleagues, I started in my closet. I get rid of all my, you know, clothes and I put these acoustic panels and and then it was the moment I had to really move on and do it more professional. Well, as we like to we like to say, no one needs to see how the sausage is made. All those clothes actually work really well. That <laughs> so. is true. That, you know, my husband <laughs> the other day they he found this picture, and I was literally like, like almost bent. I don't know. I don't know how <laughs> did I do those bookings really? And he was like, "Here, these are the beginnings. Keep this picture because it's a good reminder that oh." We- all that uncomfortable space and cheap microphone, you're here. <laughs> so that's a good thing, you know, like, okay, yeah, maybe they don't need to, they, they, they didn't need to see how I was making this uh, sauce. Uh, but it was also part of the, okay, now I need to be more comfortable. Now I have visitors in my studio. Now if I'm teaching a class or doing something, I'm definitely not going to walk the people through my closet anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, another oh. one slipped in actually uh, yeah, it's actually kind of an G. interesting question Great I don't know question. if you have a good answer for this but um, uh, Dave G says okay let's turn the tables Ooh. give some advice to Anglos who want to book more work in English and Latin countries is that possible is that happening I love and it. how do I find those jobs no he didn't say that but he just I... wanted some advice <laughs> You are going to be surprised, but the amount of castings and auditions and people in Latin America looking for Native American speakers is huge. And you guys have no presence, um, really, so far. Hmm. The I'm going to make a note of that. Please. I think Dan is pulling out his notebook. <laughs> he is finding because, the one pencil with a tip on it. Uh, even though I already said that we don't have agents, unfortunately, but in Mexico, in Mexico, yes, they they have they have um, two or three agents. They're big people. Connie Troncoso. I don't know if there is any way I can put this on the chat or or can I do you that? You can type it into the Tony comments. Troncoso. Well, I'm like. not gonna. Okay, Tony Troncoso, um, if maybe any of my colleagues in Latin America can put that on the chat, that would be great. I'm very helpful. Um, she's one of the agents in Mexico, for example. Um, Directorio de Talentos, that is another big agent in Mexico. Um, but mostly are the, oh, how is it called? Yeah, the agencies, the, how do you call this in English? Um they do the marketing for the companies. Public, public relations. Yeah, public yeah, relations. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's a great start, you know, like just sending your demo. You don't really need to introduce yourself in, in a poor Spanish. If you don't feel comfortable, please don't do it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it important as an American with an English accent, you know, American accented voice, do you need to have some Spanish under your belt? No, 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 market really. to these countries? No. As long as you really can just understand the very basic, like what's your rate and um, and for how long and what will be the, you know, the platform or for how long will be used, etc. The usage, um, mm. it, that's just the very basic thing. Mm-hmm. So it's more one, one-on-one really, the clients. But the other big source for us, and we were talking about this before it started with, uh, with Dan and George, is the unions. So there is a three big unions in Latin America. There's Mexican, Mexican one, um, and you don't really need to be part of it, but just to be aware they exist, and they're usually looking for American ones. The ACL, ACL is the Colombian um, union, in, and they're com- all the time we are we have a, a a group chat on whatsapp they're like hey i'm looking for americans hey i'm look so we are like okay let me call you know my friend who's bilingual because she was born in miami but then traveled to colombia and blah blah, blah. and i'm like wait but where all the american well my american colleagues uh anytime i'm trying to i'm, I'm trying to help another casting director I go through my Facebook page or Instagram again, and I say, hey, 
looking for Native Americans. So yeah, uh, uh, but not talking about the Argentinian one that you Dan have some information there. Well, that well, is different. Yes, no, I, I I I remember hearing that you know they have to uh, you have to be licensed there. I mean the rules in in the different you know South American countries are all fascinating. Uh, Latina, it has been absolutely fascinating having you with us tonight, and uh, we really yes. appreciate you taking the time to to join us. And uh, and it, you know, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, or if you're doing any 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 teaching or any webinars, are you doing any of that kind of stuff? I do uh, March five, if I'm not wrong, but you can check on Real Voice LA. Um, teaching this. Um, uh, you know how to do how to set up your home studio it's more for people who also wants to do this crossover from latin america to the american marketing and um yeah also with centauro which is one of the biggest dubbing uh studio houses we have in sao paulo mexico colombia and miami centauro producciones i'm the dubbing teacher as well there and i'm very happy to be connected with my community and for of course not only latinos but also american that i'm trying to to connect more and more because this industry is not only growing but getting stronger and we really need to keep educating new generations and it, this is very very important that you guys also have in this space thank you so much great thanks for joining thank us you. tonight valentina latino all righty George and I will be right back after these messages to wrap things up and to rack it up for tech talk. So don't go away. Bye. Bye. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, if you've been listening, you've probably heard uh, <laughs> some stories from Valentina Latina about how Source Connect is a big part of her uh, life uh, and her studio life and her production life. Just even having Source Connect has even, just because she has it listed on her website that she's a source connect equipped studio has actually landed her work and that is true it happens you know when you when you put out there that you're a pro and you show that you use professional software equipment and you've put the the time the effort the money into learning them and setting them up it just paints a prof a picture of professionalism and uh you know that is something that will help you win the gig it's going to be your talent that gets attention, but those things can make a difference when they're thinking about who to book on a job. So Source Connect is one of those tools in your toolbox that screams, I am a pro voiceover actor. There's just no doubt about it. Now, to use it, you have to learn some basics. Uh, you have to learn how the system works, how to set it up, and you do have to have a good sounding studio, right? Just having Source Connect doesn't mean you have a pro sounding studio. You need to have that sorted out. There is so much to learn. We do this on the show every week and teach you what it takes. But at the very least, have a demo and have a license set up, at least a demo license under your name. So you're in their system. You're showing up as a user. Very, very important. Um, and just go to source-elements.com and get started. Get that 15-day free trial and start using it and tell them we sent you. We'd appreciate it. Anyway, we'll be right back to wrap it up right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. 
All right, and we're back. And uh, our thanks to Valentina Latina. Very interesting. She's, I, you wouldn't know that they're looking for English voices down there. So I know. Thanks to Dave for the question, and thanks to her question. for that gold answer. Yeah. With some good information. So uh, yeah, that was what, excellent. What a delightful young lady. Thanks for, mm-hmm. for being with us tonight. Uh, well, let's see. Next week on this very show, if you happen to be here or stay alive with us for a little bit, uh, is Tech Talk number 74. And George and I have lots of cool stuff to talk about. And, of course, we're happy to take your questions. Uh, I so, show off a new piece of gear, which you've oh been listening my. to the whole show so far. Ooh, and it's been working great. Um, who are our donors of the week? A lot of familiar names there. Should we tag team? Absolutely. Like We'll start with Philip Sapir. Thomas Pinto. Shelley Avellino. George A. Whittem, my dad. Brian Page, great actor. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice, which is, I believe, Dr. Nathan Carlson. I believe so. Uh, right. Antland Productions, Uncle Roy. Uh, Shanna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manweller. Yeah. Speaking of Martha Kahn, she's going to be joining us in a couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, talk about getting your kids into voiceover, because that's, that's what right. she, she does. Is lit. She's on fire doing kids' voice acting coaching and stuff. It's Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC, JMC Demos. 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 Our thanks to Jeff Holman for being here and getting the chat room uh, working right and getting those questions to us. Our amazing technical director, who had to ride her bike today, so she, we, you know, we couldn't be in the studio. But I'm jealous. I haven't ridden mine in like a week. Yeah, Good for I, you. I'm gonna get so. on mine too. Sue Merlino, thank you for the great work you do. And uh, so uh, that's gonna wrap it up for Voiceover Body Shop this week. Stay tuned because we're gonna, gonna record uh, Tech Talk number seventy four right after this. We want your questions, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, we'll wrap it up here. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Oh, wait. Tech Talk's next time. No, Tech Talk's next. No, no. (laughs) I'm just teasing.